Guys, in this video, we will be having a look at the cross-regional load balancer. So it's called a cross-regional load balancer, and it's also known as a global load balancer. And it works at layer 4 of the OSI model, and it's a load balancer for distributing traffic amongst regions. So it's not the standard load balancer, which works within the regions. It's a cross-regional load balancer, so it can distribute traffic across different regions. So you may have a region in the UK and a region in the US. It can load balance traffic between those two regions for example so you can scale out across regions providing a single global front end to the clients and it routes packets using the microsoft backbone network rather than the internet so let's deep dive into it and see what it has to offer we can load balance traffic across let's say two or more regions one in the uk and another in the us and if any of the regions fail let's say the uk region fails it will carry on load balancing traffic to the remaining regions in this case just the us because it's still up and running and once the uk region is back up and running it will start to load balance traffic back to it as well so it's a load balancer for your services within multiple regions but there are a few things we should know about how it works under the hood so again, we have services in the US over here, and then we have services in the UK over here. And then we have our cross-regional load balancer here to load balance traffic between these two regions. Now, these are our users from around the world that want to access our services. And there is something known as participating regions, and the load balancer has a front-end IP address accessible to the users, and the IP address of the cross-region load balancer is advertised by all participating regions. And you can get a list of these participating regions from the Microsoft Azure website over here. And a participating region is all of the regions that advertise the IP address. And this part is actually a key part to understanding how the routing works. Because a load balancer doesn't actually exist in the middle of the ocean, as I have on my screen here. And the way this all works is it uses something called Anycast IP, which means the IP address is advertised from the participating regions. So all of these four regions here, one in the US, one in the UK, another one in Japan, and another one in Australia, will be advertising the IP address amongst other participating regions around the world as well. All advertising that same Anycast IP address. And depending on where you are in the world, will depend on which region you will be routed to. So if we are in France over here, we will probably be routed to the UK where the services are over here. But if we are in Japan over here, to get to the UK or to the US where all our services are or live, it will route the traffic to the Japan region over here. And from here, it will route it across the Microsoft Azure Backbone Network. Let me quickly draw a line for the Backbone Network. So let's get a pen. So there will be the Microsoft Azure Backbone Network, which is a massive backbone network that spans across the world that connects all the different Microsoft regions. And this is the key part to why it's very low latency architecture, because traffic is routed to the nearest region and then it's handled by Microsoft's backbone network that spans throughout the world. So these regions that advertise the IP address use the Anycast protocol known as participating regions and are ready to accept client traffic and route it over the Microsoft Azure backbone. And when I said depending on where you are in the world will depend on which region you will be routed to. Well, there's another term is it uses a load balancing algorithm known as geoproximity. And based on the entry point of the traffic, the load balancer knows the entry point of the region. And from that information, it's able to route it to the closest regional deployment points. The next thing we will briefly touch on is the home region, and this is where the cross-regional load balancer or public IP address of the global tier is actually deployed. So this is where your load balancer is deployed. And if it fails, it doesn't actually impact anything in terms of routing or traffic. It just impacts the management side of things. So you will lose management access. And here is a list of the home regions where you are able to deploy the cross-regional load balancer within. Now looking at some other terms, starting off with the backend pools, it only load balances traffic to regional based public standard load balancers. So the configuration of the backend pool within the configuration in the Azure portal has to be load balancers. This is the only option. It has to be public facing standard load balancers, which make up the backend pool. Then there's the health probe and the health probe is non-configurable. It could be in the future, however, 
but at the minute it's non-configurable and it's automated and checks every 20 seconds the health of the regions and it's a pass-through load balancer so it preserves the client IP address so it's not a proxy for example the F5 LTE appliances can be deployed in proxy mode and proxy the connection creating a new flow between the load balancer and the final destination but this just passes the connection through and the final destination can see the original IP information and makes decisions based upon it so the final destination can see the original IP address of the client and just two of the key points before we look at the configuration of the load balancer an internal load balancer cannot be added as part of the backend pool and IP version 6 and UDP traffic are not supported now I've logged into my Azure portal and to configure the load balancer we'll go to load balancers from here I've already got an icon on the home page and we can see the different types of load balancers here on the left hand side but we will click on create load balancer and then click on create from here now a lot of it is similar to the standard load balancer so you start off as usual with your subscription and specify the resource group and we give it a name of cross region hyphen lb and then specify the region you want to deploy it within and then for the SKU type and tier we want it to be a standard SKU and it has to be a public type because if it's the internal type it doesn't allow you to specify global within the tier so it needs to be a, a global load balancer so if we click public as a type we can see that global is available to us again so let's click global and at the bottom we can see some information about the cross regional in brackets global load balancer and it says it can only be deployed to a home region make sure you've selected a valid region and you can learn more from here next we need a front end IP address which will be the IP address all the clients will target to get to the services and you can add it from here and if we click on create new from here it can only be a standard global and static assignment shown here so the rest are grayed out and you can click OK here before that we give it a name public IP CRLB or something and we just hit OK on that and add it at the bottom and that's done so we also have to give it a name for the front end IP as well so let's call it FR hyphen IP hyphen CR hyphen LB and then click add at the bottom here and next for backend pools here it says add a backend pool to get started so we can click on add a backend pool from here and then you can specify the load balancers unfortunately I do not have any standard load balancers so it doesn't show anything for me so when you select a load balancer here in the load balancer pull down box you would then verify the front end IP configuration from here and the IP address over here that corresponds to the load balancer within this box here and you've got to give it a name as well so let's call it BE hyphen pool and let's actually cancel out of here because I've got nothing to add in here we're just going through the configuration steps I'm not going to actually apply anything on this load balancer so let's go back to create a load balancer and let's have a look at the next one which is inbound rules so if we go to inbound rules here and in here we need to add an inbound load balancing rule which is like the glue combining all of the configuration together such as we give it a name first call it LB hyphen rule and then we can specify the front end IP configuration, the back end pool, the protocol and the port and whether you want to use session persistence. So you want the client to keep going to the same service once it's built a connection to it. And there's a few other options down here as well. We just click on add to add the load balancer rule but of course I've got lots of configuration missing so I will not be able to save this. So let's just click cross here and move on to the next one. So the next one is outbound rules and with outbound rules this is the real last configuration item because the last two are just tags and review and create the load balancer and in here you can specify any outbound rules so what you can do here is give your server access to the internet so if they need to download updates and things like that so you may give a Microsoft server access to the Microsoft update portals so it can download its Microsoft updates things like that so that's what you would do from here then as usual we can create tags from here and confirm all of the settings and review and create and last but not least I just want to point out that this uh, load balancer the cross region load balancer is currently in preview and it says this preview version is provided without a service level agreement 
and it's not recommended for production workloads. So the feature's there if you need it, and you would certainly want to test it on your services if you want to actually use it for real life. But just be mindful that there's no service level agreement with this 